Morning brothers and sisters. Um, I want to make a short video. I made a video a couple of weeks ago that was really about just standing uh, strong in the final days. And I started out the video by saying there was no pre-tribulation rapture. And I said I may make a small video just to explain why I obviously I don't believe that. It's difficult because I don't really have the initially have the energy to do that because it just simply doesn't exist in scripture so i'm not going to try to prove there's no pre-tribulation rapture that's like trying to prove a negative because the scriptures are not there it's never been taught it wasn't taught for 1800 years it was a new teaching introduced mainly by john nelson darby in about 1827 this is just simply a fact <laughs> the proponents of the pre-tribulation rapture will We'll try and come up with some vague references in the last 1800 years. It's, it's, it's about as strong as their scriptural references, which they don't have any. There just simply isn't any. I know that sounds unkind, but anyway, let's just run through a few scriptures about the second coming of Jesus, which is what has always been believed by the church. And what is just only taught in the scriptures and nothing else is taught there. So I think the best place to start is if you have a Bible is Matthew 24. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 29, here's what it says. Here's what Jesus says. Jesus has been asked a question at the signs of the times, and he begins to explain to the disciples. He says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man. All the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man. Every single eye and every single human being will see the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no secret second coming. And then a third coming it simply doesn't exist. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory hallelujah and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other this is the great and notable day of the lord while well, he gathers his own with the sound of a trumpet the trumpet we all know the trumpets of Revelation. Here's the last trumpet sound. Christ returns. It's not good news for the world. It's good news for his believers because now the wrath is about to begin. And so let's not confuse the great persecution that's to come upon the saints uh, with the wrath, two totally different things. And we have known huge uh, tribulation persecution in the last 2,000 years. Literally millions of saints killed, burnt, tortured, every imaginable horror. Did God not save them from wrath? Was there something missing in the martyrs that we celebrate? I don't think so. It's completely, uh, it's a completely different concept, the wrath of God upon, the wrath of God upon humanity when Christ comes back, when judgment, the great judgment day of God, when Christ comes back as opposed to the, the great tribulation, the persecution period, when men will persecute saints. So just remember the difference between men persecuting saints and the wrath of God expressed and delivered in judgment to humanity. Of course, we will not experience the wrath of God. That's fairly self-explanatory, wouldn't you think? So the next scripture will be uh, 1 Corinthians 15.8. If you can turn... There, First Corinthians fifteen eight, and we'll just read. Let's see, First Corinthians fifteen. I'm sorry, First Corinthians fifteen fifty one. Behold, I tell you a mystery. It's a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 
at the last trumpet. Let's trumpet again, brothers and sisters. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. The trumpet will sound when Christ returns. Every ear will hear it. Every eye will see him. No secret second coming. And the dead will be raised and incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption. And this mortal has put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Hallelujah. Death is swallowed up in victory. Praise the Lord in that marvellous promise. But just remember in the twinkling of an eye, those who remain on earth, those who are not dead, those who remain will be caught up. The dead in Christ will rise first. Those who remain will be caught up and join them in the air as Christ comes back. No secret second coming, only two comings. Next scripture would be uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's see. It's going to be verse 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. The trumpet of God again, brothers. You see a pattern there? And the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. There's no mistaking the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. None. There's not a single scripture to suggest that there's a secret second coming and then there's a third coming. It's a new teaching. And that's why I'm not going to focus on the teaching itself today. Uh, of the pre-tribulation rapture I want to focus on the truth I think it's what Paul always did he simply focused on the truth rather than disseminate the error so this is what we're trying to do today so number four second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2 uh, starting verse 3 let no man deceive you by any means for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I wanted to look at a couple of things here. Unless the falling away comes first. Let no one deceive you by any means. There's a great propensity to be deceived on this. For the day will not come, for that day will not come, unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed. The falling away, brothers and sisters, there's the clear signs of what will happen prior to Christ returning. The falling away, I would argue that we're in the midst of it right now, maybe somewhere near the end of it. But I would also argue that the, the Son of Man, that, that the man of sin is revealed, has not been revealed yet. There has been no revelation of the Antichrist. He hasn't stepped forth to reveal himself on the earth. And all of these things precede that, precede the great falling away, precede the persecution, the tribulation, according to the Lord Jesus Christ, after the tribulation of those days they precede these things so the tribulation comes first and then the son the, the 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 man of sin is revealed the great falling away all these things happen and then christ comes and we're still here it's clearly seen if i go back to I'm just going to go back to first thessalonians for a minute I just want to read something I'm starting in chapter five but concerning the times and the seasons brothers you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then suddenly, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labour pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But, there's a key but, you see this thief in the night, 
is not for you and me. This is, comes like a thief in the night to the world. They don't see it coming. They have no idea. Not, they have no idea. They do not have the Holy Spirit. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as others, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Now listen, brothers and sisters, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. This is erroneously used by people of this false view of the tree trip. You see, they say, God did not obtain us for wrath, commingling wrath with persecution. The commingling is not the same. The wrath of God is revealed upon the ungodly. You see, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but obtain salvation. You see the juxtaposition, wrath, salvation. So let us jump back to and jump back to Romans uh, chapter five, verse nine. There's a tremendous promise here about God's love, and if He loved you when you were yet in your sin, how much more is He loving you now? It's fantastic. But in verse nine it says, "But much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him." For if when we were enemies where we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. It's about salvation. This wrath, this juxtaposition between wrath and salvation, the eternal wrath of God, is eternal darkness for the sinner. We shall not see that wrath. We shall, we shall not see the eternal wrath of God upon sinners. We shall not see the wrath of God when Christ comes back in judgment to judge the world. Of course we won't see that. We won't experience that because we're under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't ever let anybody tell you that this wrath, that we won't experience the wrath has anything to do with the persecution, the tribulation that's to come upon the saints. They're two entirely different things. So brothers and sisters, that's just a few scriptures uh, to ponder on, just simply ponder on the truth. It all points to the Lord Jesus Christ coming back at some time after the tribulation of those days. The word of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Irrefutable what the Lord Jesus said. And even bending like a pretzel in the wind, you still never get to uh, refute or break the Lord the chronology of what the Lord was talking about there in Matthew 24, that after the persecution of those days, after the tribulation, after the great tribulation. So, that was just a few scriptures to follow up on uh, my assertion. Uh, I made the assertion. So here, there's the scriptures that speak simply about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I hope that blesses you, brothers and sisters. God bless you.